have you ever wondered how big the Dragon Ball cosmology is? Well today I'll be explaining the entire canon Dragon Ball cosmology, since my Kakumiai Goku video did well and you guys liked the idea of a Dragon Ball cosmology video well here it is, before we start make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell icon. Now with no more filler let's get this started. Now to go over the cosmology I'll start with the most basic part the living world, so how big is the living world? According to Daisenshu 4 page 20 and 21 it is indeed infinite, and according to page 54 of the same Daisenshu it's infinitely expanding, so what is the universe infinite or infinitely expanding? It's both the observable universe in Dragon Ball is infinitely expanding but the actual living world is an infinite space of darkness supported by page 20, so the entirety of it is infinite. Further supported by Daisenshu 7 calling it, the endless, expansive space, so the intent is for it to be infinite, so when Bulma says the universe has an edge, she's referring to the expanding part of the entire thing. Now what does the universe contain? Well according to Daisenshu 7 it has galaxies that exist infinitely, these galaxies contain solar system that are galactic nebulae. a galaxy is formed by a collection of this nebulae, and each nebulae has an innumerable number of stars. Also in the living world Kami's palace exist, Kami's palace has the infamous hyperbolic time chamber or the room of spirit and time, this room is described to be another dimension and the elder Kai literally calls it, another dimensional world of time, so yes the room of spirit and time is a completely other temporal dimension from the normal universe. Even further supported by the fact Goku says he can't feel Vegeta's chi and Super Buu has to break through dimensions to get to the universe. And also in Kami's palace contains other dimensions like the time room, the time room contains past, present and future and has a seemingly amount of endless clocks taking you to any specific point in time, also Kami's palace has a room called the divine realm, this room is mostly unknown but we just know it exists, and also it has another room called the pendulum room, this room is more of a spiritual room since you can travel through the past like teen and Yamcha did but only with your spirit, and also there are multiple rooms of spirit and times with unspecified size, first we have the one Meru's and Goku trained in, that room's time flow was slower than the normal room of spirit and time since one day equals three days in there. Second we have the one Frisia entered we don't know the exact time flow of it but we do know it's a completely other room from Kami's palace. Now apart from Kami's palace, the universe itself has possibly infinite alternate dimensions. Beekus when Bohan got enraged he was about to collapse slash destroy the universe, it's mentioned by Dend and Vegito that Bohan will destroy the universe, and if you think this is an outlier you're completely wrong since it was even mentioned in the Daisenshu that Bohan will destroy the entirety of the living world, so honestly the living world itself is a low multiversal. Multiversal plus construct Beekus of three spatial dimensions and one temporal plus the other dimensions it contains. Now let's go to the super dimensions in the Broly movie. These dimensions are based of mathematical formulas and superdimensional images, and in the Broly novel it's mentioned that Broly and Gogeta broke through several dimensions, implying there is more than two of these dimensions going off the definition of several, and if you think the novel does not count well they literally also do it on screen in the film. So I think that these superdimensional constructs can be higher dimensions, based on mathematical formulas and the definition of superdimensional is beyond dimensions. But before we go to the afterlife we have to go look at the lowest part of the macrocosm the demon realm, so the demon realm runs on different physics than the normal universe since magic is more dominant than science and it's on the other side of the universe, though its size is quite inconsistent. Since it's mentioned to be a small hideout by Torayama yet it's supposed to be in the other side of the universe, and the final dimension we have is the dead zone, so the dead zone is described as a hyperspace which means more than three dimensions, well is the dead zone then 4D. No it's not because it's actually 5D since a hyperspace has four spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension making the dead zone fifth dimensional, though the dead zone I'd say is an anime only realm. So in conclusion the lower half of the macrocosm is at bare minimum low multiversal to even 6th dimensional depending on your interpretation, reason I say it might be 6D it's because if you interpret the super dimensions and dead zone being 5D and the living world contains all of it then by proxy it should be 6D, or at least 5D plus if you want to say the super dimensions and dead zone are finite 5D spaces. So now let's go into the juicy part of the scale the upper half of the macrocosm the afterlife, now the afterlife like and living world are not in the same spatial or temporal axes, because in 1989 episode 8 of Dragon Ball Z it states that they're separate by space and time, not only that but Torayama called them worlds, implying they are separate, now with that out of the way how big is the afterlife? The afterlife at bare minimum is a fifth dimensional construct. Because according to Daisenshu 4 it says, transcending dimensions that cannot be perceived from the human world, even if you deny this translation there is two more translation that calls it a transcendental realm, and another one that blatantly states it transcends the dimensionality of the living world. And this is further supported by the 1998 RPG data book saying that the afterlife is a place of higher dimensions, it says it not once but twice. 
And by the way this RPG guide is listened and took all the information from Tori Animation, so it's very safe to use this as supporting evidence for Dyson 4. Also let's mention the fact that the living world is consistently called a lower realm slash world when in comparison to the afterlife, also the afterlife has no time confirmed by Goku and supported by the fact that the Kais call the living world a temporal world. So honestly the afterlife is heavily implied to be higher than the living world, and the afterlife is based of Buddhism and in Buddhism and many other Asian cultures slash religions the afterlife is considered to be a higher plane of existence, so undeniably the afterlife is at bare minimum an infinite 5D realm and yes it is infinite since its purpose is to hold souls for eternity. Now what does the afterlife actually contain? Well first let's look at heaven, it's been established that heaven is the size of the universe which even further supports that the afterlife is a higher dimension since it can contain something as big as the universe but make it look finite and small, but yes heaven is the size of the universe. Now let's take a look at hell, now hell is an interesting case because according to Frisia and what we see of him in resurrection f slash before top earth has its own hell dimension, possibly implying all other planets have their own hell dimension with unspecified size. Now on to the Enma realm, so the Enma realm is a place where you get judged to either go to heaven, hell or reincarnate, and then we have the Kai realm which is basically the four Kai's planets and where they do their duty of watching over their respective galaxy quadrant, now to the Dai Chaos planet, this planet is huge since it is comparable in size to heaven which we established is the size of the entire universe, and this planet also has its own dimension. Because one of the rooms in his mansion is described in the Daisenshu to be a extra dimension, and keep in mind this dimension has stars and planets in the background, so now with the afterlife out of the way let's go to the Kaishan realm, so the Kaishan realm is one tenth of the afterlife and living world, and the living world is a lower realm in comparison to the Kaishan realm and judging how it's one tenth the size of the afterlife and living world it's definitely a higher dimension. So where does this scale? Well at bare minimum value this should be about infinite fifth dimensional, but if you want to use super dimensions and dead zone you can scale it to infinite sixth to seventh dimensional, so yes the macrocosm is a low complex to mid complex multiversal structure. Now what is beyond the macrocosm? Well simple the bubble of the universe, the bubble of the universe is that bubble we see that represents the universe in the Dragon Ball manga and anime. This bubble is quite possibly an even higher dimension than the macrocosm, because it probably contains the macrocosm since we see that the depiction of the macrocosm has not changed, yet we still see the representation of the universe as being those bubbles, so the fact that this bubble contains the infinite macrocosm and make it look finite makes the universe bubble at least infinite 6 to infinite 8th dimensional. Yet there is something beyond even this called, the neutral zone. What is the neutral zone? The neutral zone is a space that contains the 12 universes and makes them look like finite bubbles, so by proxy in the way Dragon Ball treats higher dimensionality this neutral zone should be infinite 7 to 9th dimensional since it can contain infinite 6 to 8 dimensional structures, but there is something possibly even beyond the neutral zone which is Zeno's realm. Zeno's realm is legitimately a higher dimension because in the DBS interval special it states that Zeno's palace is floating in a different space from the universes, so yes those universes are the actual ones making Zeno's realm infinite 7 to 9d, though we don't know if it contains or transcends the neutral zone, but I suspect it does since it could act like the neutral zone's afterlife and narratively I wouldn't doubt it's a higher realm. Now for the finale we have the timeline, so the timeline in DBS holds everything, macrocosm, multiverse, neutral zone, Zeno's realm etc. It even confirms this in the DBS interval so yes the timeline contains everything and should be 8th to even 10th dimensional or even 11th if you want to say Zeno's realm is above the neutral zone, the reason why it's higher dimensionalness because in this case the timeline is an even higher temporal dimension containing past, present and future for the whole multiverse and other realms. And finally we have all timelines, there is infinite timelines, this is confirmed because they have confirmed that Dragon Ball goes by many worlds interpretation in the official website, making Dragon Ball a type 3 multiverse structure, I know some people will say MWI goes by Hilbert space which has infinite dimensions, but there is a problem and it's that Hilbert space is not always infinite dimensional because sometimes it can be finite dimensional. So there is infinite 8 to 11 dimensional timelines, and each timeline is infinite, but there's one more thing above this and it's the space between timelines, this brown space we see is a space that contains all timelines, nobody in Dragon Ball super scales to this brown space yet but this space should be 9 to even 12th dimensional since it's containing an infinite amount of infinite 8 to 11th dimensional timelines. And as a bonus we have the name Kian Realm and Angel Realm, these realms are mentioned but we do not know the dimensionality of these realms, though they're probably sparated or even above the multiverse. Well guys that's going to be all for today if I left something out please comment it out, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and understood the Dragon Ball cosmology better, with nothing more to say. Peace.